everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And it is great to be back on a good Friday. Happy holidays to everybody. A lot of people celebrating my um, and uh, wishing everybody a phenomenal Easter uh, this Sunday. And that's what we're doing today. Two wines that I think could be great Easter wines. Um, two different wines that I've been dying to try. I have not had either. The hype in my circles, circles has been tremendous about both these wines and it is the return. My, we have not been. I mean, we have not been. As a matter of fact, first person to leave uh, in the comments the last episode that we were on the laid back Friday couch gets a special gift from me. I will hit you up and send you something very special. That's nice, right, Ma? While we're in the giving mode, now nah, we'll talk about it later. Anyway, uh, really pumped. Obviously, we left it up for two days because so many people enjoyed my dad putting me in my place. Um, and uh, it was really great to have Pops on the show the other day. Let me read some of the comments from our last episode, which many thought was the greatest of all time because dad was dissing me. And obviously, for some unknown reason, even though I've pumped out 650 shows and tirelessly answer my email and care, um, I think the Vayner Nation enjoys my pain at some level, likes when I get dissed and put in my place, and, and I appreciate that. Uh, Gary says, and this is not me, uh, outstanding show. I score you and your dad together 100 points. This was the perfect show for the holidays. After that discussion, I am certainly going to go and try the Don Alfonso cab. And that's a great idea, you know, just because a couple of people returned it today because they hated it doesn't mean anything. Um... Jacob M. says, loved it, such great chemistry, son and dad, I laughed the whole time, appreciate it, Jacob. Justin Thorpe asks, oh, by the way, how come no, uh, how come no Easter pack? Uh, I guess he actually says, how come now Easter pack, but I think he, uh, he means, how come no secret Easter pack? Great call. Ma, just like completely missed it, wasn't thinking. Too much chaos lately, huh? Yeah. Sorry about that huge missed opportunity. Secret packs are coming. Another big reason is we're doing the month, we have the Wine of the Month Club now, which there's a tab up there. Ma, come on baby, link it up. Um, Wine of the Month Club acts exactly like the secret pack. It's been huge. There's even videos for it. If you click up there, you can see it. The videos of the past episodes, it's been kind of neat. A lot of good action going on with that. That's kind of taking a little of the juice out of the secret pack that we've done here so many times, but we will be back with the secret pack shortly. I guess maybe next shot would be Memorial Day. Uh, we'll make sure we do that, Ma, keep it in mind. Mike Schiaparelli, former Wine Library employee, now living in Ohio, says, Gary, Sasha, awesome episode. It really captured your relationship perfectly. I just wish you showed Sasha's birds, Michael, which are out there. And Jigger says, corked bottle of wine, one in every 350. GV dropping a kiss on Sasha, one in every 9.15 minutes. Sasha going to the head slap, one in every 13.73 minutes. Sasha as a guest of Wine Library TV, priceless. I mean that. I have no hidden interest in getting my comment read and saying that whatsoever. Jigger, good work. Okay, Ma, we're here. We're serious. It's Easter time, and we've got two wines that I'm massively pumped about. Let's get into a little education. Last show was a little bit more of a hoo-ha-ha-ha, whatever that means. Let's get into a little bit of education today and talk about Paul Jabolet, uh, the 2004, pay attention to that, uh, Le Chevier de Sterenberg Hermitage Blanc. This wine is made from 66% uh, percent Roussan and 34% percent Marsan. Two white brown grapes um, and Hermitage is one of the most interesting parts of the Northern Rhone. Very serious wines, mainly red wines. As a matter of fact, white wines only represent 5% of all wine made in the Rhone Valley, yet they are sneakily, quietly gaining momentum. I can feel it. Putting my pulse on 2011, rewind this time machine, more nerds are drinking white roans. They're great wines, they're well priced. This wine is $36. 92 points, Robert Parker. I understand that $36 is a lot of money. Please don't misunderstand me. However, there is a boatload of crap Chardonnay running around for this price point to get Hermitage, Hermitage, Blanc, white wines from Marsan and Roussan, expensive white grapes from a producer that has brand equity like Paul Jablais at this price tells you one thing, that demand, demand on, um, on uh, white Rhone wines is very low in the U.S. and thus allowing us to absolutely capitalize on this situation. 
Um, very interesting grape varietals when you get into the Viognier, but here in the Marsan and Roussan, the red counterpart is mainly always Syrah, though you're allowed 15% Marsan Roussan, but most producers stay in that 99, 98, 97, 100% Syrah when they do the Hermitage Blanc. Those wines of the serious producers get in that 75 to $200 range. Um, and so I've been very fascinated since I saw this pop into the store, and I figured, you know what, this is the kind of wine that goes well with duck, goes well with the kind of things that I associate with Easter meal, and I'm excited about it. Now, Mott, you'll notice, very oily, right? I mean, you see that? Very golden. Let's give them a little different kind of angle. Let's go over here. Let's just mix it up and have a little fun. Um, you know, so like a little golden kind of play, like very, very dark color. Almost looks like urine, if we want to really call a spade a spade, especially if you haven't gone pee pee in a while. You know, so that's what's going on here. Uh, I brought out the big ass glass because that's what we like to do, and Mott, you know what? Before we get into the rest of the series show, the green wristband, such a level of controversy, because one, we do sell them now because, you know, the economy. <laughs> the, uh, um, but we do sell them to access, but I want to continue to give them away as in tradition of Wine Library, but we're doing a slower pace, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give away 10 of these green wristbands, which the majority of people don't have yet, the Vayner Nation wristband. As a matter of fact, it's so cool, I'm gonna replace it because it is Jets green. Um, many people, I'm getting bombarded with emails to get access to this because so many people have the other four, yeah, the other four with the snippy snip. The green one, the first 10 people that leave in the comments the Easter egg that I left on the Wine Library TV Facebook fan page, I left a grape varietal, leave it in the comments, first 10 people, Mott will contact you with an email, You'll give Mott the address. We'll send you the Vayner Nation green wristband. What do you think about that? Little Easter egg. You like that tie-in, right, Mott? Because that's what they call it on the internets when you leave, like, little secrets. All right, sniffy sniff. Very aromatic in the big-ass glass. Uh, I love the oiliness that's coming across. I get a little bit of, like, an apricot peach fuzz thing going on, but it's also very earthy in its approach. Almost like a, a, a kasha type flavor, if you know what that is. Grainy. I do get a little bit of like a, a lemon peel play here as well. A little zestiness, kind of citrus action. Let's give it a whirl. Wow. What's amazing about the Roussan and Marsan grape varietals, especially from the Rhone Valley, is the acid you taste in the back end, and longevity that these wines have in them. This white wine in front of me right now will last for the next 10 to 15 years. Easy. And that's a lot of fun. This is an 04. So, you know, we're not talking about an 07, 08. And yet, it still shows outrageous, awesome freshness. Very bright. I do feel a little alcohol in the back end. I do want to see what's going on with that. 14.5. Gets a little hairy, but again, Room temperature, so that's gonna come out a little bit more, but the acid on the back end of the palate is undeniable. There's also this great pear meets peach fuzz flavor on the back end, which I like quite a bit, and gorgeous minerality, almost like I bit some bluestone and somehow my teeth didn't shatter. Let's give it one more shot. I'd be a jerk, not to mention the apple flavors. There's almost like this spiked apple cider play on the back end, but the creaminess, almost like creme fraiche that is enormously obvious on the mid palate is kind of the signature of this wine. Very straw-like hay flavors on the back end. There's that word, that graininess, maybe that converted from the kasha smell. I really like this wine. It's going very well on my palate. I really, 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 really like it. Uh, let me give it one more shot. I think Parker knocked this one out of the park. There's a little smokiness on the back end, almost like the uh, beef jerky smokiness. Um, I'm going to score this wine 92 plus points as well. I think Parker really zoned in on this. I give him a lot of credit for nailing the rating. At 36 bones, to me this is a buy, and this is the exact kind of white wine that I'd want to have with duck, uh, you know, pheasant, uh, you know, Partridge. Matt, Matt, I had partridge the other night. It was good. Um, a very, very, very good bottle of white wine. A very good start to the Easter show. Um, definitely doing better than the wines for uh, for Passover so far. Let's give a little rinsey rinse here. Uh, 
about to run off and catch a plane to San Diego. I hope some I see some of you tomorrow at the W. Uh, Mott, link that up. You can still come from the four to seven range. And I think, you know, first come, first serve for the tickets for the live tastings. So I hope to see you there. 2005, Renwood, Zinfandel from Fiddletown. I've had a couple of uh, Zin drinkers that I really respect going bonkers over this, buying it and emailing me and saying, you gotta try it. So, 90 points wine spectator, 21 US dollars, and uh, a lot of people play the turkey action on Eastermont. You know, at least some of my friends. Do you do the turkey action on Easter? Do you? So, you know, Zins obviously go really well. They're great for uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, I'm into Zins. You know, the spiciness, the pepper. I like that play. Uh, nice color. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Very weird. Almost like a, a little bit like a cave and kind of like musty. Um, some black cherry coming across now on the nose as well. Um, a little bit of raspberry pie as well. Plum. I get a little bit of a plum kind of component on the nose as well. Let's give it a whirl. monster makes an appearance in this Zinfandel and it really, really upsets me. Over oaked and over alcoholed. 15% on the bottle, I'm gonna guess a little bit more. Definitely off balance, you know, shot of a uh, little smearing off in my mouthy, absolutely true, check. Um, off balance because of the heat and the, uh, uh, and the kind of like, oaky kind of, ugh. Mm. I feel like I really bit this wood right here. Um, and, uh, and to me, there is no reason to pay $21 for a Zinfandel that allows me to really go outside, probably buy a cherry, a black cherry and a raspberry, bite a tree, stick them in my mouth, take a shot of Smirnoff, and replicate the sensation. That cost me $4, and this cost me $21, and I'm not so sold that that wouldn't be better. I think the spectator missed this one completely. I don't know how you go 90 points on this wine. Um, to me, it's really an off-balanced effort. It's an 05, so it's had a little bit more time in the bottle. I'm pretty darn disappointed in this wine. And now really trying to question, like, I'm about to get some hate mail from two or three of my really good customers that really buy a lot of Zins and feel like they're like Zin heads. Uh, mm -mm. Uh-uh. I'm gonna score this wine 83 points. Maybe my reaction was a little bit worse. You're like, why'd he go as high as 83? But there is some good fruit still. There's some spiciness. This is not awful wine, but boy, expectations were, you know, off the charts. Like this is gonna be that $20 in that, you know, I could really recommend to the Vayner Nation for Easter. And it came up short, really short, unfortunately. Um, so one very good wine and big ups to Craig uh, out in Minnesota who emailed me and said, you've got to try this wine that just came in. I'm glad he did. And uh, one not so much fun wine for me, uh, big down to the three of you, you know who you are. Um, what else, Mott? Um, oh, one of the, you know what, I didn't mention, I think that, which is so interesting, is how small Hermitage is. 311 acres in total. So, just a little fun fact. If you can get a little nerdy and find a Hermitage Blanc, I think you're gonna really enjoy it. Really great. To be back on the laid back Friday couch. And you know what, Ma? I feel like we're hitting our stride. I feel like we're pushing, you know, some entertainment with pops and definitely wanting to push the education with things like Hermitage Blanc because um, expanding your palate and trying new things, and especially in a week like this where you get to do it with your family, you know, Easter coming up this weekend. Such a great day. I hope the weather is great for you around the country. Um, hope you guys go out maybe tomorrow even, and uh, find a new type of wine, a Gewürztraminer, a Petit Verdot, a Hermitage Blanc, something that just expands your palate, even if it's like $10 from Portugal. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot of money, it's just the journey of wine is so special and so cool and, and so um, fun if you're willing to make it that instead of just running into, you know, Publix or, or Kroger's or BevMo and picking up Yellowtail or another Chardonnay or another Pinot Noir or another Pinot Grigio. Mix it up! and I think you'll enjoy it. Question of the day. What are you doing and drinking this weekend? You, don't forget, 10 freebies.
with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.